Imagine, for a moment, that you are a child. A very dumb child that doesn't know how to play video games very well. You got out of school early in order to go to a doctor's appointment or whatever, and after the fact, your mom takes you to the movie rental place where they also let you rent out video games. She tells you that you can pick out one game to rent for the night. You peruse the shelves, your tiny child mind not really knowing much about what you're looking at, until you spot it. Batman. You grab it, you rent it, you beat it in under a day because you just can't stop playing it. It's too fun for your little grubby hands to comprehend. Then, ten years later, you start making a YouTube video about it because apparently you have nothing better to do with your time than examine the themes of a game that no one really thinks about having very interesting themes or ideas. If you haven't picked up on it yet, that kid was me and that game was Batman Arkham Asylum. Ten years ago, in that ancient land of 2009, Rocksteady released a game that made critics and fans come together hand in hand to shout to the heavens, IT MAKES YOU FEEL LIKE BATMAN! And it did. Arkham Asylum has had a massive impact on the industry, not only proving that a superhero game can be legitimately great and not be Spider-Man 2, but also making waves with its free-flow combat system and its spectacular stealth design. And that's just scratching the surface of everything Rocksteady managed to do. But not many words were spared for the game's story. Most reviews don't even mention it outside of a rogue, it's a fun Batman story kind of statement. And for a very long time, I agreed with that sentiment. The story was the thing I remembered the least about Arkham Asylum. But recently, I replayed the game, and I started to notice things I'd never noticed before. Suddenly, I was seeing the game's gothic, almost mystical atmosphere. I was seeing a commentary on the nature of insanity and a dissection of where Batman fits in a world run by chaos. Arkham Asylum has a very different feel to it compared to the other games that would succeed it. The color palette is much darker, filled with dark greens and browns and blacks. Places like Arkham Mansion are gothic and dominate the scene whenever they're in shot. The moon is gigantic! Look at it! I haven't been this threatened by a moon since Majora's Mask! The entire atmosphere feels almost mystical, unreal, a perfect blend of grounded realism and the distinctly fantastical. It all feels slightly askew, slightly unreal, but just real enough to still feel connected to it. It doesn't feel totally out of the ordinary, just enough to show something is wrong. This is, for the most part, how Arkham Asylum looks on a regular basis, but it's run by the inmates, by Joker, Harley Quinn, and Scarecrow. It isn't right, but there isn't much to suggest that. It's almost as though it's very close to feeling right. But just remember whose perspective we're looking at things from. It's pretty easy to point out Joker's line to Batman at the beginning of the game, right before he breaks free. Don't be a stranger, you're always welcome here. It seems like just a throwaway, you and I aren't so different style line, but once you really start looking into the idea Joker poses, there are a lot more questions that begin popping up. How far removed is Batman from the inmates of Arkham? How great is the line between him and the Joker? Is it a wall of steel or just a line of sand that can easily be brushed away? Now, Batman being insane is not a new idea, it's a concept that's explored in the graphic novel this game is very loosely based off of, Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth, which was published all the way back in 1989, so it's not exactly innovative or mind-blowing. The interesting part about it is how the game defines insanity itself and how it then ties that definition to Batman. In order to understand how the game defines insanity, we have to look at how the game treats its main villains. And when I say main villains, I'm thinking anyone who's in the game for more than a single boss battle, BANE! So, Poison Ivy, Killer Croc, Scarecrow, Harley Quinn, and Joker. What do all these characters have in common? Well, for one thing, they were all at the Asylum because they were considered insane. But, each of their respective insanities are also rooted in emotional beliefs. Poison Ivy and Killer Croc both share an unreasonable hatred for humanity, Poison Ivy believing that plants have more worth, and Killer Croc believing that all humans are as horrible as those that bullied and abused him in childhood. Scarecrow is fascinated by fear, so much so that he puts his studies of it above any standard of scientific morality. Harley Quinn is obsessively in love with the Joker, unhealthily so, willing to do anything and everything to gain his approval, and the Joker embodies some twisted sense of joy born from a lack of care for other human beings. All of these characters' insane minds were born from or are rooted in emotional thoughts and actions. Many of the characters don't act with much of a plan in mind, they don't really think things through, they act on impulse instead of reason. Harley Quinn releases Poison Ivy on a whim, Scarecrow doesn't seem to have any plan other than just going around scaring people like it's some sort of bad haunted house. Joker injects himself with Titan because why wouldn't he? It's obviously not a part of the plan, but he does it anyway because it might be fun. Speaking of Titan, when we draw the connection between insanity and emotion, we can draw another connection to the nature of the Titan monsters. 
They're animalistic, brutal, and capable of human speech. They lack any sort of reasoning or complex thought, instead relying solely on a rageful disposition created by the Titan. The Titan is a perfect representation of a purely emotional being, one that lacks any sort of rational thought. That doesn't mean much right now, but keep that tucked in your back pocket because it'll mean a lot later. So how do we tie this to Batman? Well, let's look at some of the most memorable moments of the game, the Scarecrow Nightmares. These segments are easily the most revealing in the game about Batman's character and psyche. As Fear Toxin does, it forces the user into the deepest, darkest pits of their mind where their greatest fears lie and allows them to dig their way to the surface with jagged claws and a ferocious determination, becoming frighteningly real before their very eyes. The most interesting of these to me is actually the second one. In the second nightmare, you're walking down a never-ending corridor of Arkham Mansion labeled in-game as Wayne Manor. Lightning strikes and suddenly it's raining without reason, sirens can be heard in the distance, the wind is pushing loose papers from desks, and desks are being wrenched from their positions. You begin to hear the voice of your father, then your mother, as you continue to walk forward, almost as though they're around the next corner that you can't see as the hallway slowly transforms into a darkened alleyway. You know what it's leading to. You know the tragedy that is about to take place. It's right around the corner. You could stop it if you could just reach it, but the corner is nowhere in sight. A deep, inhuman voice holds them at gunpoint as the world tilts and the winds create chaos in the alleyway. A gunshot rings out, and then another. Suddenly, you're a child, on your hands and knees, crying over the body of your dead parents when a spotlight shines on you. The bat signal. This is the moment that created the Batman, the gunshots that inspired Bruce Wayne to stop this from happening to any other child on the streets of Gotham City, to stop them from feeling the sadness and despair that he felt in that moment. Do you see where I'm going with this? The Arkham Inmate's insanity was born from emotion, and Batman 2 was born from emotion. Batman was a direct result of the melancholy of his parents' death, and Batman knows this, he fears this. While it's easy to say that the fear being represented in these nightmares is his fear of failure, I think that it can also be said that it's his fear that he is only a small breath away from being just like the inmates he's fighting against. Look at the third Scarecrow Nightmare. Batman is the one being taken to Arkham Asylum, placed in the same spot as the Joker. And who do you play as but the Joker himself? It doesn't take much to assume that in this moment Batman is seeing things from the Joker's point of view the same way we are. Batman fears how easily he could look at the world and see it from Joker's perspective. The world of the game in all its realistic fantasy doesn't seem totally wrong, because Batman is so close to stepping over that line to where it makes total sense to him. Look at the character bio for Prometheus, a character I have seen used in absolutely nothing other than being the answer to a riddle in this game. He's quite the odd addition, but look at his bio. Quote, a dark reflection of Batman, Prometheus was raised by criminals who were gunned down by policemen right in front of him. Interesting, considering that very little is different between this origin and Batman's other than what side they were on. Yet Prometheus's desire to kill cops is seen as pathological, whereas Batman's desire to hurt criminals is not. Prometheus is insane, but Batman somehow isn't. Batman's entire existence relies on an emotional event and the emotions that resulted from it. And Batman is trying as hard as he can to fight against that side of himself. Batman stands as a paragon of reason and order. His battle with the Joker is a battle against the overly emotional nature of insanity itself. Without emotions, insanity cannot exist. Emotions are integral to the existence of insanity. At the end of the game, Joker tries to inject Batman with Titan, but Batman fights against it. He won't let himself become like the Joker who injects himself with it. He refuses to become that emotional, animalistic being without reason to guide him. He cures himself immediately because he knows that if he lets himself become like the Joker, he won't go back. Batman is a pillar of sanity in a world of insanity, the only thing standing between Gotham and chaos. He tells the Joker in the end, I'll never let you win. This fight will keep going on and on and on, but Batman will keep fighting for reason. He'll stand tall as a symbol of rationality regardless of what created him. He'll never let the Joker win. No matter what it takes, or what it might mean for himself.